Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We've been looking at an amazing series, The Promise, God's Everlasting Covenant. And I'm excited today because one of our team, Stephanie, is going to be leading us in a study of covenant faith. Faith that can change your life and through you bless the lives of those around you. So welcome to Hope Sabbath School. We're glad you're with us today. And welcome to the team. So. Look at us again, still the Gideon's band, <laughs> just five instead of 12 because of the pandemic. But God has been blessing in amazing ways in spite of the restrictions. And we've been hearing from you. We have more Hope Sabbath School viewers around the world than ever before. As you're sharing with your family and friends that they can study the Word of God with us on Hope Sabbath School. Well, here's just a few emails that we've received from Hope Sabbath School members. Rose writes to us from Canada. She says, I've been attending Hope Sabbath School for some years now due to a guest pastor's recommendation. Well, thank you, Pastor, wherever you are, for telling someone. The pastor visited our church about nine years ago, and this was my first time. No, this is my first time writing to you. So, Rose, you've been watching for nine years, wow. and we're getting a first letter. Yeah. <laughs> the notes you read from members worldwide are inspiring testimonies that confirm our God is alive. Amen. 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 We believe that, Rose. Thank you for sharing that. There is none beside him. The lessons are edifying and enlightening. The Bible comes alive, and I get excited. Yeah. <laughs> Nodding when members discuss the topic, when they call to memory a Bible verse, when they relate their experiences. Mm -hmm. In spite of your Gideon's band, that's just the five of us, you know the story of Gideon, just a small group, nothing has changed as the lessons are just as vibrant, the message is just as clear as when you had the full team. May God continue to bless and guide Hope Sabbath School. And we say, praise, praise God. God. Praise God. God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Rose, for that cheerful note from Canada. Robin writes to us from New Zealand, mm. beautiful North Island of New Zealand, and says, hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Hello. hello. All right, got a wave for Robin. We've been so blessed by Hope Sabbath School each week with a dedicated team, and we pray that God will continue to bless this very informative program and the participating members for many years to come. God bless you all. Well, I say God bless you, Robin, and your family there in Auckland. We're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Here's a note from a donor, a donor couple in Tennessee. Anybody been to Tennessee? Beautiful Tennessee. Here's the note. Even though 2020 was a brutal year, God blessed us to share a donation with Hope Channel. Amen. Amen. We love Hope Sabbath School, rarely miss it. Please thank the entire Hope Sabbath School team for the time they give in service, even during this pandemic, for God's mission. Well, we agree that we're blessed too, aren't we, yes. when we join in the mission. Such a blessing to be able to turn on Hope Sabbath School at our convenience and hear God's Word presented understandably by those who believe in the Word of God. We've grown to love personalities on the team. We miss them when they're not on the set. And a donation of $1,000 for Hope Sabbath School. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Thank Amen. you. Thank you, donor family in Tennessee. And thank you to each one of you who partner with us in this mission. We're a donor-supported ministry. You can always go to hopetv.org slash donate. Click on the button and we'll smile because we're all part of a great miracle together. Emmanuel writes to us from Ghana and says, Thank you for giving me inspiration, mm -hmm. especially at this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Watching your program has brought me closer to God. Amen. <laughs> That's why we do what we do, exactly. right? Yeah. My girlfriend and I are not on good terms because I want both of us to be faithful to God. Mm -hmm. That's something to pray about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please remember us in your prayers. Special greetings to Jason. <laughs> Jason, give Emmanuel a wave. Would you do that? I like the way you put emphasis when you read the Bible, Jason, yeah. <laughs> and I'm learning from you. Well, Emmanuel, 
I want to thank you for your transparency. And I just, mm -hmm. I want you to know that we'll be praying for you. As you, you. You're absolutely right that God wants you as you find a life partner to be someone who loves God and walks with God at, along your side. So we'll be praying for you. Thank you. Maybe someone else watching today, that was a word of counsel mm -hmm. for, for you too. Mm -hmm. Here's one last note from, oh, these are wonderful names. Does anyone um, come from Zimbabwe here today? I don't think we have a Zimbabwean. Mm -hmm. Sukulwenkosi. Mm -hmm. Sukulwenkosi. His name means the day of the Lord yeah. because he was wow. born on the Sabbath day. Amen. <laughs> what a name. Wow, it is. Sukulwenkosi. And his wife's name, ready for this one, Sibu Sisiwe. Sibu Sisiwe. It means we are blessed. <laughs> Mama and Papa, when they saw this little girl, they said, Sisu Sisiwe. <laughs> we are blessed. You know, I got this email. I want to just thank you folks for writing from Zimbabwe. I had to write and say, please tell me what your names mean. Mm -hmm. Because in many cultures, a name mm -hmm. is very it's significant, so right? So here's a note from the day of the Lord, and we are blessed. <laughs> wow. Holy hugs. Mm -hmm. Thank you for making the Bible study so lively, interactive, simple, and practical. My wife and I are regular viewers, and we regularly share the link with friends and family. Amen. Mm. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Yeah. Hope Sabbath School compliments our reading and makes us be and feel a part of a global family of God. Your testimonies encourage us and strengthen our faith in God. May God bless Hope Sabbath School Ministry and Hope Channel, yours in Christ Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I just want to thank you. I wish I could say it perfectly, but Sukul Winkose and Sibu Sisiwe, thank you for writing to us. And we need your help right now as we sing our theme song. It's a 3,000-year-old scripture song, Psalm 105. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name. Let's sing together. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name. Stephanie, calling upon the name of the Lord is always appropriate, isn't it? Especially when we study God's Word. Amen. Let's pray as we begin our study. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your Word and for the lesson from your Word today. We pray that as we study, it would not just be a head knowledge, but it would be something that would change our lives Amen. for eternity. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 When you think of faith, what comes to your mind? It could be a Bible verse, Bible passage, or a Bible character. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Jason. I think of the phrase faith that works, so faith producing some kind of action. Faith that works by love, right? Produces an action. Mm -hmm. Travis. I think of the word confidence when I think of faith, having confidence in something. Having confidence, that's right. Anyone else? Mm. Billy. Uh, in James, I like it when it says, uh, faith without works is dead. So, in the book faith of Faith without works is dead. Stephanie, I thought of a Bible story. 
just popped into my mind mm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, <laughs> also called Hananiah, Meshach, and Azariah, yes. who were willing to walk into that furnace knowing mm. our God is able. Mm. Yes. Our God is, that's to me is a living faith. Confidence, yep. mm. confidence. And interesting enough, and I'm not a Greek scholar, but I, in the Strong's Concordance in the Greek, that Greek word for mm. faith and often for uh, belief or believe in the uh, New Testament, it means that confidence, it's a persuasion, a conviction, especially trusting God for our salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm, that's powerful. Yeah. With that thought in mind, I want us to begin our study in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. And um, Amy, if you would be willing to read that for us. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Okay, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, and I'm reading from New King James. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Mm. All right, so how are we saved? By grace. What does by the grace. Bible say? By grace. By grace. Yes. Through, through, faith, through faith, right? Faith, acceptance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not of what? Of our works. works. Okay, lest any should boast. But we were created for what purpose? <laughs> good works. For good works. For good works, right? It's the works um, doing good by love, right? Mm -hmm. So if is that just for the new covenant or is that also for the what happened at Mount Sinai? It's, it's, for Israel. It was for both. For both? Mm -hmm. What makes you say that, Travis? Because it's the same covenant. It was just better promises. Mm -hmm. It's the same covenant, only God is, was, God is faithful in his promises where man was faithful in the old covenant. But it's the same covenant promise. That's right. There's always mm -hmm. only one way to be saved. It always has been the grace of God received mm -hmm. through faith. Yes. And mm -hmm. then loving obedience, like you said, to respond. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Yes, Billy. And also, I think it's the same principle that, you know, uh, just like back in the, new, uh, the old covenant, that the children of Israel couldn't save themselves, so God had to step in and save them. And that's the same thing for us, that, you know, through faith, we cannot save ourselves. So the same principle is applied uh, to the new covenant, covenant as in the, the old covenant. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Let's continue. Yes, Travis. So I wanted, I was just thinking about the sanctuary because a few studies ago we had the sanctuary, but when the sinner would bring the lamb to the sanctuary and he would be sacrificed, he walked away and by faith he had to believe that, that he was cleansed from his sin. Mm -hmm. So it still took faith even to walk away from that sanctuary. So mm -hmm. I believe Pastor Derek is right. I mean, it was the, it's the same. Mm -hmm. We're saved the same way from the beginning to mm -hmm. the end. And we'll find that it's that faith. They were looking forward right. to mm -hmm. the ultimate sacrifice mm. of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. We look in faith back to what he's mm. done. Yes. Mm -hmm. Am I right? That's right. Yeah. All right. Let's turn with this concept um, or discussion of salvation in mind. Let's turn to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. Mm -hmm. And Sabina, would you read that for us? Sure. So Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 and 21, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And verse 21. Oh, yeah. Do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Uh -huh. All right. So how can you be dead and alive? <laughs> Isn't that what it's saying? Someone help me with that. How can you be dead and alive? Travis. That's be, being dead to an old life. You know, when we're baptized, we're buried to the old life and we're raised to a new life mm -hmm. in Jesus. And this verse means a lot to me. I even now have tears in my eyes thinking the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who had, that, that He saved me. And that is, that's the one thing that keeps me going day after day mm -hmm. after day. And I can wake up with confidence every morning and know that Jesus loves me. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's confidence in oh. Jesus. It's confidence exactly. in His love for me. And yeah. Stephanie, sure. I think it's really important to remember who's writing this. It's mm -hmm. someone who really did think righteousness came through the law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Saul of Good Tarsus, point. 
You know, he killed people who believed in Jesus. He believed that the righteousness came through the rigid adherence, mm -hmm. not only to the law that was in Scripture, but to all the other laws that were out there. Mm -hmm. But he's, he's just saying, no, Christ died in vain if that's the way. Mm -hmm. Salvation comes mm -hmm. through faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that's a real miracle, isn't it? A yes. transformation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is amazing transformation, seeing Saul going from Saul to Paul. Yep. Yeah. And that's what God wants for everyone, that's right? right. Mm -hmm. Billy, go ahead. Yeah, and I think the context was that back then people thought that um, Christ was not enough, so you needed some supplement. And that supplement was, well, you know, I can still keep you know, the law because they didn't believe that God could actually save you mm -hmm. and with no help from, from, from yourself. So Paul was saying that there is no supplement and there is nothing that you can do at all uh, from the faith uh, that you have in, 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 in God. So, so the context I think he was writing was the, that, that idea that God needs help. And he was telling them that you cannot have faith in the law or even part of the law. You need to have full faith in Christ who can save you. Mm. Mm. So it's interesting that we would say that because many of us may have believed at some point mm. that in order to get to heaven, we needed to supplement God's plan. Mm -hmm. when, when did you learn and realize mm. that God's plan was salvation by grace through faith? Mm. It was a free gift for you. Mm. When did that happen in your life? Travis. I, well, I've told the story on Hope Sabbath School many times. That's okay. That, that it happened mm. in a tree. You know, because I had raped, being a young boy growing up in church, I was always mm -hmm. afraid of God. I figured if I didn't keep the commandments, He was going to get me. And, mm -hmm. and through my failures, I thought, I, I just gave up. Well, then someone gives me this book, Desire of Ages, I'm reading. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought, what? This isn't the God that I had been taught about. And I gave, gained a whole new picture, reading the story of Zacchaeus, and it changed everything for me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Changed everything. Mm -hmm. Billy. Yeah, mine was in a crazy experience um, in, in terms of I was in school and I was, you know, doing all the homework, everything, and I was dependent on myself in order to get through. But at, the, at that time, I think that's when I started taking, you know, uh, um, church more seriously and, you know, my belief in, in God. And God was using that school experience to teach me something that's very important is that if he has a plan for me, like I cannot depend on myself or I cannot depend on my intellectual knowledge in order to get through. So what he did, he actually, even though I studied, the more I studied, I, f I found out the, the worst I did uh, in my class and I d could not understand that. And it wasn't until after I um, finished the classes in, in the semester then I found out that God was teaching me to be humble, mm -hmm. that it was an aspect of salvation that you know, we cannot take pride in our own works that he will provide certain things, but we need to get ourselves out of the way so that he can uh, have his full work in mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, mm -hmm. thank you. Amy. It, you know, I don't have a specific moment. Um, it's kind of always been a tension that I've, that I've struggled with. Um, and I think I understand it a little bit being a parent. And that is that we do a little bit of what we call behavior modification or behavior training with our kids. It's something that you do with a dog, you know, dance and you get a treat, you know, or shake and you get a treat. Well, we do the same thing with our kids. You know, if you're good, then we can go out and play. If you're good, then we can have another cookie or, and I think we very easily translate this, even though we're not taught, mm -hmm. we kind of assume that that's the way that it is with God. Mm -hmm. I'm a very task oriented person. I make checklists. I live by checklists. And so it's very easy to do that with my relationship with God too and feel like, you know, if I have my devotions and I do my prayers and I do my outreach and, you know, all these things that God's going to love me more. But actually, it's when I take time every day in God's word to mm -hmm. pray and to read that I feel that love mm -hmm. that God has for me. <laughs> and that it's not about what I do, it's just that I am. <laughs> Praise yeah. God. You know, if God loves me because I am and, I, and that inspires my faith, mm. you know. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you very much, Amy. Sabrina. Anthony, I was thinking here, um, you know, I think there was a time in my life that I had no idea that I actually needed a savior even. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, for some time, even for some friends that ask me, I think I would say that Jesus is the Savior that I didn't knew I needed mm -hmm. in a certain way. 
So I don't think that I have struggled much time for the lack of understanding when I understood that there is salvation available and it comes through to faith and by His grace. But I think I took some time to realize that I was imperfect and that I was a sinner and that I needed a savior even to myself, mm -hmm. which I think it's another side of this coin of uh, legalism, let, let's say this way, because in the human mind, we don't need salvation like we we are lacking nothing but the moment that you have a true encounter with God and he exposes you to your need mm -hmm. that's when you realize that there's nothing that you can ever do to you know um, make up for these imperfections that it's only his grace that can make it for you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh, that's my experience I mm -hmm. think that I would like amen to when we yeah. truly recognize who we are yes. then we can truly appreciate who he mm -hmm. is mm. Yeah. Yeah. And for our lives um, the the concept of not of works lest any man should boast, mm -hmm. but yet we are to boast in something, mm -hmm. right? Let's turn to Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. While we don't boast in ourselves, there is something that we are called to boast in. Mm -hmm. And Jason, would you read that for us? Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. I have the New King James Version here. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Mm -hmm. So boast or uh, glory, different versions say glory, um, others say boast. What, what is meant by that expression, to glory or to boast in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is meant by that, Travis? So it's interesting if you look at the last part of the verse, it says uh, that by whom the cross, the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Mm -hmm. So the cross of Christ, it was Christ's death on the cross that made it possible, you know, and God empowering us to say no to the world and say yes to Jesus and live that new life. And so the life we now live isn't of ourselves. We can say, thank you, Jesus, because it's Jesus now that lives in us that produces these good works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sabina. And I can also think of the context in which he's saying those things, because we know that the Galatians, they were struggling because some of them were trying to make the Gentiles, some Jews that were coming to the faith were trying to make the Gentiles coming to the faith to do certain things that were not necessarily required for salvation. And they were boasting themselves in the fact that they had circumcision or some other things that were of their practice. Uh, however, how I understand what Paul is teaching them here is, well, you know, you were boasting on your own works and the only thing we should be boasting on is in God's work and His sacrifice for us and how we actually need that and we have received it. Mm. So. Yeah, I think it's not in my cool. righteousness, yes. but in his. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that we should not also be putti putting any sort of weight on other people as well, because look at what they were doing, right? right? They were trying to make others do things to achieve salvation or to be better mm -hmm. when God was just willing them to share grace and partake the new message they had accepted as well in Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Well said. Billy. And also, um, it. It's very similar to, I think, Jeremiah 9, 24, when God uh, was telling Jeremiah that, you know, if anyone wants to boast, let him boast the fact that they know me. And it's very similar to this, mm -hmm. the same fact that God understands the human condition that, you know, we like boasting. Mm -hmm. So he's not suppressing that, but he says that if you have to boast, boast in the cross, boast in the fact that you know <laughs> me. I'm giving you permission mm -hmm. to, to boast, but here is a directive. Mm -hmm. um, so I like the fact that even God is adapting to our sinful flesh <laughs> and he's providing a way for us not to sin, but you know, boast in what needs to be boast, which is you know, the, 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 the power of God. Mm -hmm. Yes, the power of God. And mm -hmm. at the cross, boasting in the cross, at the cross, what happened? Je oh, well, there, that, that could be <laughs> a wide range of, of <laughs> answers on that. But Jesus shed his precious blood. Mm -hmm. He shed his precious blood for each one of us. Mm -hmm. Let's turn to uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. And I'd like us to hear what these two verses say. 1 Peter 1, verses 18 and 19. Mm -hmm. 
and Sabina, would you be willing to read that for us? Of course. So I have First Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it says, Knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver or gold, from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Mm. All right. My version says redeemed, that's what yours said. Ransomed is also another um, mm -hmm. word for that. Mm -hmm. When you're thinking about ransom, what comes to your mind? Go ahead, Jason. It makes me think of a person that's in prison or that they're a hostage, they're in a situation where they aren't free and they're, they're in bondage to something. What would the readers of Peter's epistle be thinking about at that time when they were reading that? Well, Go when ahead, I Jason. think when I think of bondage, I actually, and especially if in the in the mind of uh, the Jews, I would go back to Moses and their being in Egypt and being in bondage mm -hmm. to uh, Pharaoh, and then also you have the whole history of the Jewish people, and they were constantly in in and out of bondage to various tribes and groups, and even mm -hmm. at this point, kind of in their history, they're almost in bondage to some of the ideologies within their religion, if you will. You have the Sadducees and Pharisees and all the different groups. So there's a lot of bondage that these people um, have been in mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. So the, yeah. from what I understand, ancient practice, they would, uh, a slave would be set free and mm. usually by paying some, some form of payment to mm. set that slave free. And it was the uh, relative who would uh, pay, mm. um, and that's what Jesus has done, mm. is he has paid, um, he has redeemed us, not with corruptible things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but with his precious blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is up and beyond what we can even imagine. We can't even understand, I don't think fully, mm -hmm. the, um, the love of God for that. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about his precious blood, the precious blood of Jesus. And um, it sets us free, and Jason, you, you mentioned that, that it sets us free from bondage. Bondage from what? Bondage from what? From the power of sin. From the power of sin? Well, from sin that's already been committed. You know, the, and also, uh, I was speaking with a young man back home, and uh, we were talking about this very thing. And if, you, if we cannot be freed from currently from the sin we're in, we really have no message. The, the good thing news about the gospel is that we can go to somebody who's caught in sin, like the woman caught in adultery, and Jesus can give them the power to be free from that and not do that anymore. Mm -hmm. The power of the gospel doesn't free us just from the sins we've committed, mm -hmm. but give us the power to not commit those sins again. Mm -hmm. Which is really, the, if you read and study grace, mm -hmm. grace is power. Mm -hmm. Power mm -hmm. to take care of our past lives, and power to give us strength mm. to walk. Mm -hmm. But that's a connection with Jesus. We have to be connected with him, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Jason and Amy and Sabina. Okay. And it can free us not even just from the sins, but from the guilt that we might have from those mm -hmm. sins. We may mm -hmm. be like, yes, I know that's wrong. I, I want to be free from that, but a person may still have in their mind, mm -hmm. they may be almost, you could say, a psychological prisoner to their past. Mm -hmm. And so the blood of Jesus gives us the freedom where we don't have to be a prisoner to that, where, mm -hmm. where our, our whole God. mindset can even change. Praise mm -hmm. God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amy. You know, I think a lot of times it's easy to think of sin as being something outside, you know, mm -hmm. something that happens to us or, you know, like its own being in a way. But Jesus clearly said that sin begins in the heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are deep things in my heart that I don't like people to know about. You know, I, I'm really good at wearing masks, not letting people see my anger, my frustration, my impatience, you know, whatever it may be. And yet Jesus, th Jesus is freeing, from, freeing us from that as well. He's mm -hmm. giving us power. You know, he's promising to change our heart, mm -hmm. to change that source of sin in me. Um, and I think that's just, to me, that's even more powerful than giving me power over outside temptation. It's giving me power over the temptation that comes from within myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Sabina. Yes. So what I'm thinking also, and again, looking at the context, um, as you were considering what is it that they are, how could they relate to this text, right? 
And I think that for many of them, they could also relate to the fact that even the Jews him themselves who were coming into the faith and the Gentiles who were exposed to their customs, that they were bon in bondage with their own habits of how they believed they could achieve God's favor. You know, they were doing so many things attempting to achieve that favor from God that was not working, you know. So I think that in some way also they were being uh, released or freed from wrong religion, from uh, this burdensome understanding that if you do something, you're going to trade that for salvation when you know that's not the truth. And this also creates bondage. I know of people who unfortunately don't have this precise understanding of God's grace and unfortunately they live self-punishing, they live, mm -hmm. you know, attempting mm -hmm. to do things to achieve God's favor and that's mm -hmm. a heavy burden for them as well. Mm -hmm. And many times they burden other people with this type of mentality. So sure. I can see how can they be freed from these types of things as well by God's grace. Mm -hmm. God. Amen. Yes. Um, and that's exactly what it is. He is the one that has to free us. We have to move on. I know mm -hmm. this is a great discussion, um, but let's move over to Romans 6, verse 23. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. And Billy, if you would read that for us. Uh, Romans 6, 23. There is good news. Right. <laughs> and I'll be reading from the New International Version. Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages of sin is what? Death. 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 So really, His blood ransomed us, mm -hmm. yeah. redeemed us from sin and death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. Eternal life. Eternal, eternal life. life. So where does where does the eternal life come from? I, I'm thinking of a verse in 1 John, actually, uh, 1 John 5, 11 through 13, that gives us a little, ad, ad, some additional information related to that. 1 John 5, 11 through 13, and who, who could read that for me? Sabina? Yes, so I have here 1 John 5, uh, from verses uh, 11 to 13. And it, I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it says, And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. All right, so having eternal life, that's a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. And it is God, um, it says God hath given to us eternal life, mm -hmm. and this life is in His Son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you have, if you have the Son, you have life. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to have the Son? Mm -hmm. Someone help me out with that. What does it mean to have the Son? I Billy. I'm going to look for the verse, but basically it's like you believe in the Son of, uh, in Jesus Christ. I think it's uh, John 8 uh, that, that talks about that, that if you believe in me, then you have, you have life. Um, so it's basically believing in Christ Jesus and having faith in Him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I maybe would add a couple of words there without distorting the text, and that is to have a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Because mm -hmm. it's not like we possess Him, mm -hmm. right? That's mm -hmm. right. Actually, if anything, He possesses us mm -hmm. to surrender to him exactly mm -hmm. but um, it comes back to that uh, that text that Billy quoted earlier from Jeremiah they might know yeah understand and know me so to me John saying when you have a, s a relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. as your Savior and Lord mm -hmm. you have life and it's not just later that you have eternal life mm -hmm. yeah. you have it now experience right. that right yeah. now yes Yes, Travis. Well, I was just thinking of John 17, 3, right? It, it, it says, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, mm -hmm. the only true God, and Jesus Christ who you sent. Just mm -hmm. building on what Derek has said. Yeah. And Jesus even said, he is the way, the truth, and, and the life, life right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so far, we've talked about salvation by grace through faith, mm -hmm. and that we have been ransomed from both sin and death, by the precious blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at an example of this faith 
in Abraham. Mm -hmm. And we'll start out in Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. Genesis 15, verse 6. And Travis, would you read that for us? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. All right, so what does, it, what does that expression accounted to him or credited to him for righteousness mean? What does that mean? Sabina and then Travis. Well, I can think of, you know, when you want something to someone and then like if I give you a coin like or money back, you're saying, oh, this is accounting to me is for paying back for something. So here in this context, I see God saying, well, for righteousness, you are trading righteousness for your faith. Like you believed in me so I can give you righteousness. That's how I see it. Mm. Mm. And just to explain the verse too, it says, and he, that's Abraham, believed in the Lord, and he, God, accounted it to him for righteousness. Because we could get confused, he and he, who the he's are, but it was Abraham that believed in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then it was God who accounted it to him, his belief for, to him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. So could we say that Christ's righteousness overshadowed human righteousness? <laughs> yes. Which, by the way, is what? What is human righteousness? <laughs> Filthy rags. Filthy rags. Right. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. um, mm. So, go ahead, Sabina. So it, it says if God is saying, well, you, have, you don't have righteousness, but you have faith. So I'm going to <laughs> trade your faith by my righteousness. Yeah. That's how I see it. Yeah. And going back to that trust and confidence in Christ for our salvation, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. He had faith, yeah. trust, confidence in Christ for his salvation. Yeah. And that is what mm -hmm. he was given. Mm -hmm. Yes, Travis. And often we're tempted to think that it's our faith, but actually it's not even our faith. Because if we all get to heaven and say, how did you get here? Oh, because I had faith. Well, then it's actually drawing, you know, we're drawing attention to ourselves. But actually it's we believe in God's faithfulness. Mm -hmm. So Abraham was trusting in God's, believing in his faithfulness. So it's actually God's faith, mm -hmm. you know, that saves mm -hmm. us. So. So mm. God gets the credit either way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it sounds like Abraham was an amazing man of faith, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Can you yes. think of times in, in Abram prior to um, the birth of his son and mm -hmm. Abraham in his life where you could see living faith mm -hmm. taking place in his own experience? Can you think of some examples? Yes, mm -hmm. Sabina. So the first one that comes to mind is in Genesis 12 when God gives a promise to Abraham and call him out of where he were to go to this land that he didn't knew. <laughs> and then uh, Genesis 12, 4 says, So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot with, uh, went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. So for me, that's a great example. You know, he, with 75 years old, a person is already settled. He already probably have, you know, mm -hmm belongings, riches, family members that he enjoyed around him. And yet he just responds to God promptly. And for me, this is an example of faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Anywhere else in his life? Go ahead, Travis. So, uh, you know, the most amazing experience for me, well, there's many in Abraham's life, but uh, when he, when Lot is captured in the uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and they're taken away, he puts this little band of people of uh, you know guys you know shepherds and servants together and he goes and attacks multiple kings in their army yeah. and i thought who would do that because it seems like that that would be a ma like you would just get massacred but god but he trusted god and he moved forward and i thought well you know what he really trusted in god's faithfulness yeah. because i would never do something like that mm. Did Abraham always have this living faith, reveal a living faith? Mm. No. Okay, you're shaking your head no, Billy. I mean, tell me. Because he's 75, the prior to that, I don't think he he had that faith. So he spent most at that time he's living, uh, you know, till 75 years old and he did not have that. So um I forgot where in the Bible, I think in in Joshua it talks about that, you know, Abraham and Terah, they used to worship idols. So God had to preach the gospel to to, to Abraham to build that faith and he basically, you know, he humbled himself and accepted that faith yeah. to him. So that means that 
anybody can have faith. It's, it's, I think the fight is that you know, we have so much pride. We don't want to accept certain things. And because of that, that's holding us back. But Abraham, despite the fact that he was old, he could have been like believing himself as mature that he doesn't need God and he mm-hmm. doesn't need, need God, that he has gone through life experiences. But at, even as an old man, he's like, I need to be born again. I need to listen to God and start, start fresh. Mm-hmm. Amy. Mm. Yeah, I mean, just thinking about his story, telling a lie about Sarah when mm. they went to mm-hmm. Egypt. Yes. You know, and the trouble that that got him in, and you would think he learned his lesson, but then he did it again. Mm-hmm. You know, he did it twice. And, you know, I, to me, that, again, where's, where's your faith? But I can relate mm-hmm. to that. <laughs> there are times in my life where I don't learn my lesson, you know, and, and so, yeah, I mean, he was a very real, very real person. And how about the how about um, the choice of going ahead and taking Sarah's handmaid? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Was that faith? No. Was that a living faith? No. 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 Yeah. <laughs> no. Derek, was that what you were going to say? <laughs> yeah, and, and of course, generation after generation has mm-hmm. had the consequence of that decision. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. But uh, no, I think he was a great man. He followed God when he was seventy-five out of his homeland, mm-hmm. but he was. He was a work, what we call a work in progress. Mm-hmm. Yes. He was still growing in his faith. Yeah. Yeah. And the one high point, which we didn't mention, that really showed how he'd grown was when he's willing to take his only son up yeah. onto Mount Moriah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And he did not, I have no doubt, he did not understand why he was being asked to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the book of mm-hmm. Hebrews says he believed Mm-hmm. that, God, that the God would raise him from his son from yes. the dead. Mm-hmm. So there's this incredible faith because of that relationship that he's developed with God mm-hmm. Yes, that will cause him to go beyond what he would even imagine. Mm-hmm. In spite of the fact, as you pointed out, that he'd had yeah. many failures too. Yeah. yeah. But that gives us hope, doesn't Amen. it? Amen. It does. Let's turn, yeah. Billy, if you would take us to Romans chapter uh, 4, and we'll look at verses 1 through 5. Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. And let's see what the Bible says again about Abraham. Okay. I'll be reading from the New International Version. What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, discovered in this manner? If in fact Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does Scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. But now to the one who works, wages are not credited as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the one who does not work, but trusts God who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is, what is Paul trying to convey in these words? We've somewhat touched on it because we've looked at the life of of Abraham, a living faith versus a faith that we might consider dead, right? Mm -hmm. What is Mm -hmm. he trying to draw? What what is the lesson for us? Mm -hmm. Travis? So I think in the context is he's writing to the Romans about law keeping um, for salvation. Mm -hmm. Right? Because we could get the idea from reading this that, well, we just don't have to, Mm -hmm. you know, um, do any good works in our life or keep the law, but, but that's not what he's saying. It's just not, it's not for our salvation that we keep, that, um, that we do it. We're saved by grace. Again, it's reiterated over and over in this lesson. Mm-hmm. We are saved by our, our belief in God's faithfulness to, hu- to the human race. Mm-hmm. And there always does seem to be somewhat of a tension, um, as Amy was saying, between faith and works. Let's go to James, James chapter 2, and we'll look at verse mm-hmm. 17, 18, 21, and 22. And Jason, if you'd be willing to read that for us. James chapter 2, 17, 18, 21, and 22. I have the New King James Version here. James chapter 2, verses 17 and 18, and 21 and 22. Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. Mm -hmm. Then 21, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works, faith was made 
perfect. Mm. Mm. So here we see uh, living faith versus dead faith, right? So what's mm -hmm. the difference? What's the difference between a living faith and a faith that is dead? Go ahead. Don't, don't be shy, Jason. Well, living faith is alive. You can see it. There's evidence for it. And the evidence mm -hmm. is the good works. Derek. You know, Martin Luther didn't like the book of James because he really wanted to emphasize it's all by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. But James is not saying it's not all by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. He's just mm -hmm. saying if you want to know if you have a living faith, Mm -hmm. It's going to be evidenced by what's happening in your life. Yes. And, and we know Jesus said that too, you know, about people mm -hmm. who say, Lord, Lord, but they don't do the things that I say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or when he talked about a good tree mm -hmm. will bring forth good fruit. Yeah. Yes. I think James is yeah. just emphasizing you can do a, a quick check to mm -hmm. see if your faith is alive or dead. And that is it will be manifested mm -hmm. in what's happening in your life. Travis? Well, I was just thinking about this. So then as I'm looking at this in James, what he's basically saying is if there's not, if your faith doesn't produce, produce works, it's actually not even faith at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. You know, you could say it's dead faith, but it's not faith. I mean, we couldn't even give it that name mm -hmm. because it's not producing. It's not real faith in God. You don't mm -hmm. believe in his promises. You don't believe in his redemption because that does produce works in the human heart. Yeah. That makes me think of the entire book, uh, chapter in Hebrews, Hebrews 11. Mm. And we won't go there. You can, you can do that study on your own. But Hebrews, it talks about by faith, this person did this. Mm -hmm. right. By faith, right. this person did this. <laughs> by faith, this person did this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Faith acts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it acts by love. And mm -hmm. that's what the Bible says, Amen. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when we have that loving relationship with Jesus, mm -hmm. our faith, will cause us mm -hmm. to act. Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. Um, amen. You know, up to this point, we've talked about, I would say, the head knowledge, right? We know that salvation is by grace through mm -hmm. faith, right? Not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. Mm -hmm. It's we've been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he yes. separated us from sin and death. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that Abraham, and if we look through the rest of the Bible, there are many others who have had a living faith mm -hmm. yeah. and they've yeah. demonstrated that yeah. and that's all good to know. Yeah. But my friends, if we stop there, we've missed the point. Mm -hmm. yes. Because what Jesus wants us to do, mm -hmm. what God wants us to do is to make it mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. To make grace mine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. John chapter 3, mm -hmm. 16 and 17, one of... Um, one of the promises of God mm. that we are to believe and accept by faith. And Amy, if you would read that for us, John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, and this is New King James Version. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, mm -hmm. but that the world through Him might be saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. For God so loved, mm -hmm. therefore He gave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. God so loved, He did something. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And not to condemn. Not mm -hmm. to condemn, mm -hmm. but the world through Him might be saved. Mm -hmm. yes. Some some people may have the view that that that. God is a celestial policeman or, you know, he's looking up there to see what you're doing wrong. What do you learn from this verse? He's not here to condemn. What else? Mm. Mm. That he's actually Selena. working towards mm. our salvation. <laughs> that he not only doesn't want to condemn us, but he's doing the part of the work that one would expect to be done, you know, by a person. But no, he knows our limits and he loves us so much that mm. he's doing the work. Billy. Yeah, basically, I'm getting that, you know, God is not selfish, that he wants to share his love, he wants to give. Mm -hmm. So, um, and he has a lot to give, and he's giving everything, even his precious son. Mm -hmm. So, it just uh, shows that, you know, God is willing to do any, um, anything. And he, even, um, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, also the context is that, you know, back then, you know, religion or belief in God, people believe um, that, you know, gods were, you know, things that you need to fear, that you cannot please him. So, there is no love from that higher power. And then here's a, 
a God who actually wants to have a relationship w with you and loves you. And that's something that people did not, they weren't familiar with. So it's a new concept and it's a beautiful concept and it's actually the truth mm. too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Which makes it all the better, right? Yeah, all the, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Something that we can claim yeah. exactly. and accept, yes. Stephanie, um, the precious gift of eternal life mm. is not just living forever. Mm -hmm. It's living forever with a God who loves us that much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I didn't understand that growing up. I just thought mm -hmm. it meant we wouldn't have to die. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to be forever with a monster would not be a blessing. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But to be forever with a God who loves us so mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why, that is... Well, how That's do you beyond comprehension. My favorite Hebrew word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Travis. I can't help but listen to Derek and think of the prayer that John, mm -hmm. Jesus prays in uh, John 17. It's almost like he's pleading with the Father, pleading that they will be with me mm -hmm. where I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be with him. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not just to live forever. He can't he wait will. till we get there. Amen. He's excited. Right he's now. preparing a place. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Billy. Yeah, I just also want to add, I think Paul also made the same prayer in Ephesians, I think in the last uh, verses in Ephesians that, you know, the ultimate goal is so that, you know, we can know the breadth, the height, and the length, um, depth, yeah. depth mm -hmm. of, of the love of God, because ultimately, if we know who God is, then we'll understand Him better. We'll understand His love, but mm -hmm. He also is telling us that, you know, be ready because there is a lot we can learn uh, from God mm -hmm. in that, you know, His love is so amazing and it just humbles us and makes us uh, want to do better. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'd like us to look at another promise that we can um, believe and accept um, mm. through faith. And that is Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. And Jason, would you read that for us? Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30. Why is this promise of Jesus so precious mm -hmm. for our lives today? I have the New King James Version here. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do you have a heavy burden? I think if we were honest with ourselves, we have something sitting on our hearts today mm -hmm. that we need God to intervene for, mm -hmm. right? Am I right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's a, a family member that we're praying for mm -hmm. or it's an, a personal struggle that we have in our own lives, mm -hmm. we need Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's saying, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. Take my yoke, come mm -hmm. up beside me. Mm. Yeah. For my, what does it say? Yoke is my easy. yoke is e easy and mm. my burden is light. Yeah. And I think, mm -hmm. Stephanie, the greatest burden that many people carry is trying to save themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we don't have to save ourselves. We don't. Mm -hmm. Jesus saves us. Amen. And if, if mm -hmm. someone watching uh, Hope Sabbath School today mm. grasps that amazing truth yes. mm -hmm. that that Jesus loves them and wants to spend eternity with them. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest burden that could ever be lifted from the human soul. Amen. Amen. The yeah, peace. So mm -hmm. Can you think of some Bible promises, mm -hmm. Bible promises that you have claimed mm -hmm. in your experience? You've claimed by faith. Billy, did you want to share? Yeah, I okay. apologize. I don't know that verse, but it's related, relating to, to the verses that we read uh, saying mm -hmm. that you know, Jesus says, you know, peace I'll give you, but not just any peace, it's my peace. Mm -hmm. So there is a difference between the world peace, which is more like, you know, you're resting or, but God, Jesus promised a special peace. And I think because he understood the condition of the human heart and also the context that, you know, people are living in, that mm -hmm. back then, you know, people were oppressed. You know, they were under a uh, belligerent government, foreign power that's basically oppressing them. Mm -hmm. And they wake up day and night not knowing if they're going to be alive or if, if they, are, they are siblings or their mm -hmm. relatives are, are, are alive or being persecuted. So they are under that constant pressure and stress. And Jesus comes in saying that, I'm going to give you peace, but it's not just mm -hmm. any peace, mm -hmm. my peace. So I think that's something we can apply here today that, you know, um, I think right now with the coronavirus, with the pandemic, 
with mm -hmm. uh, so many people dying and you are cr craving for peace. And Jesus says, I will give you peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Peace in the midst of external struggles. And I, I really appreciate what you said, Pastor Derek. It made me think of uh, Romans chapter six mm -hmm. and, or I'm sorry, Romans chapter five. It's, and if we can go there, Romans chapter five, verse one, it says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus Praise Christ. God. Amen. And so many other Bible promises are, do any of them come to your mind? You don't have to, we don't have to mm -hmm. go to it, but if you want to recite it or tell us where it's found, mm -hmm. Travis. One of my favorites is Lamentations 3, 20 and 21. His mercies are fresh every morning. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every morning when I wake up, mm -hmm. there's a fresh set of mercies. God is waiting with open arms. He's gentle, we just read, mm -hmm. and lonely of heart. So. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sabina. I can also think of John 10:10 10, 10, when God promises that we would have life and life abundant in Jesus. Yeah. So just this promise that we can enjoy life, life abundant for me is amazing also. Mm -hmm. It's been an amazing study. And mm -hmm. uh, one thing I want to leave with us is that faith is believing that God loves us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he has our best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. That's Amen. what it is. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes. I'm sure while you were watching today, uh, engaging, maybe raising your hand. Stephanie, I have a favorite Bible promise. Write to us at sshope, hopetv.org. We'd love to hear because the Word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And His promises, my friend, are for you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this beautiful study on covenant faith. We thank you for the gift of faith and for the promises that you invite us to claim. We bless your name in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. Don't forget, if you've got a favorite promise, don't just know about it, claim it, and rejoice in the love of our great and awesome God. And then don't keep the blessing to yourself. Go out and be a blessing to those around you.